Hello guys and welcome in this new episode of the Robin tutorial series. This is an extra episode we decided to record because we received a lot of feedbacks and questions asking for new content and actually content that show you how you can use Robin in real world scenarios and how you can take the most out of Robin. So we decided to record this video uh, in which we are going to dig a little deeper inside Robin outputs and we are going to see specifically a few of the CSV files generated by Robin. We are going to understand what kind of data we have in those files and now how we can use the, that data to perform additional analysis on top of Robin's generated models, as well as uh, additional plots and charts that can help us share what we have learned in the modeling phase. In fact, in the real world, more often than not, you will have to um, share what you have learned, what you have uh, done in the modeling phase to people without a technical background. And you have to make everything as easy as possible for everyone to understand. And so uh, some kind of data may be better to be shown on a chart more than on a, a CSV file or an Excel file, which can be hard to, to visualize things. And that's exactly what we will do in this video. Before starting, I would like to remember guys to subscribe to our YouTube channel as we will continue to share content about the science, machine learning, marketing mix modeling, and so you can keep up to date and don't lose anything. Okay, so let's start. As you can see on my screen, this is actually what um, Robin generated folder looks like after the modeling phase. And specifically, I mean the folder generated by the first modeling phase in our previous video. So these are our models up here, our one pager model, models. And let's start with the profit decomposition PNG. This file is generated by profit. And as you can see, we have several different time series, which we are going to, uh, uh, to check one by one. So the first time series, uh, as you can see here, first of all, we have the, the full data set. So it's around, uh, it's from 2015 to nearly 2020. And this is the whole data set. So this is not only the, um, the subset of data that we gave Robin in the rolling window. This is actually our whole full data set again. So uh, the first thing we are going to see, as you can see here, that var means dependent variable. In our case, is the revenue. This is simply showing us over time how our revenue changed. And this is something that we have in the one pager model as well, but it's useful to have it here because as you can see in a second, we are going to see the seasonality and you can already see a clear pattern because, uh, between our revenue and our and the and the seasonality basically of our business. But uh, before going into the, the seasonality, the second time series time series we see here is about the trend. And as you can see, our business had a really uh, increasing, strongly increasing trend from the start, approximately from 2016 up to nearly the end of uh, the start of 2018. Sorry, then. By the, the start of 2018, actually, we started to, um, to have this negative trend and we went really uh, back down to, to where we started, basically. About the seasonality, you can see there is a strong pattern uh, in the, the last part of the year up to the beginning of the year, in which we start to decrease again and we start to go up again uh, around the, the middle of the year. So this is pretty much around May to June, and we go up, 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 near, near the end of the year, we, we get to, the, to, actual, to our actual peak of sales, and then start going back uh, again. And as you can see again, there is this clear pattern in seasonality that is represented really, really well in our actual sales of, over time. So uh, we see that, re that there is a strong impact of seasonality in our sales. And then there is the holidays. Basically, what we see here is uh, what happens when there is an holiday. And you see there are, there are really strong peaks on holidays. So what we can learn here is basically that our um, business is affected a lot by holiday and mainly in a positive way because you see only a couple uh, downfalls, but mostly positive peaks. And if we try to see, you know, there is a peak here, we go up and... Uh, approximately there is another peak here 
and we can try to see the, the biggest one. So around the, the start of 2017, you see there is a strong peak here. So probably an holiday and again on 2018, this is lower. So probably other variables are uh, helping us in this period of the year to, to sell more, but you see still uh, the peaks match on holidays. And the last one is actually events. Events was a, an additional variable we chose to, to add to the model, uh, which represented the um, uh, basically events held by the company. So the company had this couple events over the, the course of the last two years, let's say, and we decided to, uh, to model those as well. And as you can see, they have a, a huge positive impact. In fact, over here, if we go up, we see a strong peak uh, in the um, right, right when the event has been has took place, basically, and again on this smaller one we see another peak here. So uh, this is what profit profit tells us, and this is already um, another addition to the model one pager and the budget allocation to to share to other people in order to. Uh, to understand whether your business is seasonal, uh, uh, whether holidays have impact and so on. Besides from that, we have a couple more uh, that we are going to see real quick. And so the first one is the Pareto clusters. Here, as you can see, we have, first of all, all our, I will move myself on the right side. Okay, uh, we have a series of model ID. And as you can see, these model ID are actually more than the, the five ones that we got plotted here. And that's because these are all the top models generated by Robin before the clustering. In fact, all the way, uh, for each model, you are going to see the RSSD, the NRMSE, the, the, the MAPE will be always zero unless you, you use the calibration function. And then you're going to see basically the ROI for all your um, paid media channels. And as you can see here, uh, there is the cluster, which is basically a number telling you in which cluster the, um, uh, the model was contained, basically. Um, and over here, you have a true or false whether the model was selected as a winning model in the cluster or not. So we are going to see that we have exactly one, two, three, four, and five winning models. And in fact, we have five one-pager models in here and the IDs will match and so on. So this is just to give you an idea of what other models Robin had generated that were good enough to, um, uh, to keep as winning models, basically, in the Pareto outputs, but not enough to, to win in the clusters. In case you didn't, we didn't use the, the clustering function, we would have plotted all these ones. And so, uh, moving on to the next file we want to check real quick is the Pareto hyperparameters. And this file, again, you will see one row per each model com with the models outside the clusters as well. So uh, then you are going to, to look only at the one cluster, but you will have all the data here. And you will see all the optimal hyperparameter per each model iteration, per each variable. So uh, in our code in the previous video, if you remember, we had to set the boundaries, the hyperparameter boundaries for Nevergrad to optimize. And then after the, the model was generated and Nevergrad had been uh, executed, basically, uh, we get all the optimal hyperparameters here. So we have our alpha, gamma and theta for each variable that we used, both organic and um, paid, basically. And all the way on the right side, again, you will see the NRMSC, NRSSD, as well as the R square of the model generated in which these are contained, basically. And uh, you will see the number of iteration, uh, the number of trials. This is the, uh, these other parameters were found by Nevergrad. So if you remember, we used five trials with, uh, I believe, 2000 iterations per trial. And you see that these two models come out of the first trial uh, added iteration uh, 1761 and 1824 and so on. So this is useful in case you want to rebuild any kind of function like cut stock or um, saturation curves, you will have the exact hyperparameters used by, um, by Robin itself in the, in the model generation. And now the, the last 
three files that we want to see in this video is Pareto aggregated, all decomp matrix and the and the media transform matrix. Actually, I have already imported the files just as they are in this Google Sheet and we will use the, the Google Sheet in a, in a second to generate some additional charts. But first, let's take a look at what these files are containing. So this is the first file and it's actually the Pareto aggregated CSV. And as you can see here, you have uh, your model ID, you have all the model IDs as before, and then you have this uh, column containing the name of the, um, of the independent variable. So here again, we are all having all the independent variables, not only the, uh, the paid media, but the organic and context variables as well. Uh, then we have the coefficient for each independent variable. And then we have a couple extra, um, very, um, sorry. Uh, yeah, we, we can say variables such as the uh, aggregated decomposed effect, uh, share of effect, uh, the um, mean decomposed effect and so on. And basically uh, there is this really useful uh, page in the Robin um, GitHub in which you can see exactly the formula used to, to calculate each and every one of these uh, parameters, sorry but we are not going to, to focus on this too much right now. The thing that we can find really uh, helpful in here is the POS uh, column. In this column, we are going to see whether the coefficient has a positive, true, or negative, false sign. So um, let's see, for instance, the events, row four. Oh, sorry. Uh, Okay, so row four over here, we can see that it's actually having a positive coefficient, while this one, which is false, is 11, is season. And we will see in a second if this is actually something that we can, um, can find out by only reading the data. Uh, so besides from that, we have more uh, information such as the spend share refresh, effect share refresh. Uh, again, um, model metrics such as an RMSC, Dagon per SSD and so on. And this is basically uh, things that we want to, to see in this file. We have the total spend for each variable. This is only for the paid media variables, of course. So you can see the total spend in the whole data frame, as well as the mean spend, the spend share, and so on. This is actually the percentage of the total spending that is attributed to this channel. And this is the effect share. So uh, to, um, to have it as clear as possible, it's basically the data that we see in the one pager model on this file right here. So we are going to have the uh, share of spend, the share of effect per each media channel. So in case you want to uh, to rebuild this kind of um, of plots by yourself, uh, you are going to see the ROI and the CPA. So really everything you need to, all the data used by Robin to generate the one-pager model are uh, are in this CSV and some of them are in this one. We are going to see the decomp Pareto old decomp matrix CSV as well, uh, which as you can see, it holds time series data. Uh, and actually one thing that you can note here is that the, the, the data frame is only from 2016 to 2018, then it repeats and we'll see in a, model, uh, in a moment why it repeats itself. Uh, but this is because in this file specifically, you are going to have the data that's referring only to the rolling windows data frame that we gave to Robin. And this is because, if you remember, we said this in one of our previous video, uh, you can give Robin like five years of historical data. And those five years will be used to, to model the trend, to model the seasonality, the holidays and so on. And then you can use the rolling window function, function to tell Robin, okay, model my... Um, dependent variable only in on the last two years of data because those data may better represent your business so here you have the the data only for the the data frame used in the rolling window 
Of course, if you don't use the rolling window function, you're going to have the, the full data here. And specifically on the last column here, we have the sol ID, which is the model ID. And as you can see, we have all the time series data for this uh, first model, then it changes to, to something else and the, the time series data repeats. So that's why you see it repeating. Let's go back on top and we are going to see that the columns here is our dependent variable. In our case, it's the revenue. So this is basically day by day in the rolling window, the actual revenue, the one that we gave to Robin, okay? So this is the, the real revenue that we, have, uh, that we have in our data set. Then we are going to see all our independent variables. So we have the season, the, season, the holidays, the competitor sales, sorry, uh, the events, the TV, spend, the autophone spend, and so on. And here we are actually seeing how much of the revenue is attributed to each channel by Robin. But actually this is not the real revenue they composed, but it's the predicted revenue. So on the right side here, you see that there is another column, which is the depth var at. This is the predicted revenue by Robin. And in fact, you can see it's, um, it's a little different. Here it, is, it should be like 2 million, 800 thousands, while here is 2 million, 900 thousands. So it's close, of course, because our model is 93% uh, accurate but it's not the actual value. But uh, however, if we sum all the values from here to the intercept, as you can see down here on the right side, the sum is exactly the, um, the predicted value. So this is decomposing the predicted sales, not the actual sales. But in general, uh, in here you will have the exact amount of revenue day by day in the rolling window data frame that uh, is attributed to each and every independent variable used in the um, in the model and the intercept over here is basically the starting point so uh, here is zero but you may want to have an intercept that it's uh, 10,000 so that if you do uh, zero on it if zero is attributed to each independent variable basically you are still generating 10,000 um, dollars a day this is not the case we have our uh, zero intercept so if everything is zero, we are going to generate zero. And as you can see here, we, you may have negative, uh, uh, negative numbers here because maybe holidays are having a, a negative impact on our sales. So we have like minus 300,000 and so on. And uh, one thing that we can do here, let's start plotting some extra information is we can do this insert chart and then we go for a um, stacked area chart, okay? So let's move this on the right side a little bit. Let me zoom out. So, and we want to see how, uh, how much of the revenue is attributed to each channel in a kind of a, a visual way, uh, way sorry, uh, day by day. So, we inserted this chart here, double click on this and go on setup and you can do uh, the select date range here. And as easy as it is, you can just take from here and drag all the way to the right side, sorry, a little less, okay, up to the actual uh, intercept. And then down here, you have to be careful not to choose the wrong ID. So uh, right here okay this is basically all the data from the model 181 as you can see here okay uh, you press okay over here move again sorry uh, go up a little okay now double click on this setup we have our uh, range set and now we want on the x-axis our um, Sorry, let me change this to A1 so that we see the actual column names. On the x-axis, you put DS, and then on the series, you start putting like uh, your dependent variable, for instance, this is your sales over time. Then you can see how much of these sales are attributed to trend. But we have to actually change the order of this. So uh, let's put the, the trend, the season, the holiday, then let's, let's add the 
uh, competitor sales, TV, out of home, print, and so on. And basically, uh, you see, we, we are starting to see how everything is actually having an impact on us. Specifically, we want to see what, what is this line here, and it's the trend. So uh, maybe to avoid this kind of uh, line, which may be a little confusing, we can remove the trend uh, once and for all and we see there are periods in which we actually go down so let me enlarge this a little and you see over here there is holiday that is bringing zero and there is seasonality that, that, that is bringing minus 300,000 approximately and this is pretty interesting because you see that the seasonality can have a really negative uh, impact in fact if you remember in the aggregated one, we saw that our season variable actually has a negative coefficient. So basically the season, the seasonality is having a negative impact on our business. You can add more variables to, um, to this chart and better understand uh, how the revenue is distributed along each variable. But uh, we are not going to focus too much on this one in this video because we want to cover the Pareto Media Transform Metrics CSV as well. In this file, again, let me move myself to the right side and zoom back in a little. We have the same structure as before. In fact, we have uh, all the time series data and the model ID on the right side. So if we go all the way down, we will see that the time series data starts back again, the, the model ID changes and so on. We'll focus on the first part where we have our uh, model ID 1881 just for, uh, for the sake of the video. Uh, one thing to note here is that the time series data actually gets repeated not only on the model ID, but on the type as well. In fact, this, uh, this file contains several different types. We have raw media, we have raw spend, we have predicted exposure and so on. And we are going to see them, uh, each of them, one by one right now. But real quick first, one thing to note here is that we are starting from 2015 and we will see we are going up to 2019. So here we are having the full data frame and not only the rolling window data frame, but only for some types. So let's start. Let's go down to the second type first, because this will make it easier for you to understand exactly what we are talking about. So uh, over here, let me move again to the right side. Uh, we see there is, after raw media, there is raw spend. And as you can see here, we have both our paid media variables and our organic variables, such as the newsletter. However, in the raw span, of course, we don't have any for the newsletter because it's an organic variable which doesn't have a span. So you will see the, uh, the, shell, the cells are all empty. As per the paid media variables, instead, we have day by day from the beginning to the end, each day, how much we spent on each channel. And this is actually the data that we pass to Robin. So uh, this is not predicted, this is the raw data the data that we uh, have in the data set we used to, to model with Robin. On the other side, we not only gave the, the spend for, uh, for these media variables, we gave the value as well. And specifically for the TV, out of home and print, if you remember, we gave the spend on both the spend, the media spend and the media variables. For Facebook and search clicks, as you can see here, we gave the impressions and actually the clicks. So, uh, we have both the spend and the impression and the spend and the clicks. And this is actually a little different because uh, if you take the raw spend and raw media for these first three columns, you will see they are exactly the same. As per these other three columns, you will see that the newsletter actually has data because these data are basically how many uh, newsletter sessions you are having each day. And this is, again, the raw data that we gave to Robin. For Facebook impression and clicks, here we see the impressions and clicks, which, has, which are the media variables we pass to Robin along with their spend. So here you have the media values, and down here on raw spend, you have the spend. After, the, after this one, we have the predicted exposure. Again, you see here on the predicted exposure, 
there is no data for the newsletter because this is basically only related to the paid media variables and specifically for the uh, the ones that we used uh, our spend both on the media spend and media variables basically uh, you are going to see the exact same values at, as the spending but for impressions and clicks for instance this is the um, amount of impression and click that Robin predicted to generate based on how much we spent on that day. So basically what Robin does is af after it has been trained, it takes the, the raw spend day by day and it tries to predict how much impressions we are going to generate and how much clicks are going to generate and so on based on the, on the exposure metric that we used in our model. So uh, this is basically what the predicted exposure part means. Then we have the ad stocked media, which is the value of the media after the ad stock function has been ap applied. Uh, if you want to have uh, an idea, uh, the ad stock is basically the effect over time. So if we take, uh, sorry, the carryover effect. So how much of the value that my ads are bringing today will be uh, broke to the next days, in short. And in fact, if you see the, the very first row of the other stocked media, you will see it's exactly the same as the raw media because on the first day, there is no ad stock effect because it's the very first day of data. Then from the second day to the third and so on, you will see that the values will be slightly higher than the raw media. And this is because the, the following days will be impacted from the previous days as well. So you will have the raw media plus what's coming from the previous days. And this is something that you can find in the, um, in the Robin documentation over here. If you go on features and variable transformations, you have the exact mathematical formulas used to, for both ad stock and diminishing return. So uh, without going too deep inside this, this is basically what the ad media represents over here. And this is calculated on the whole data frame, while the predicted exposure, for instance, is only calculated on the rolling window subset of data. As you can see here, it starts on uh, 2016 and ends on 2018, while this starts again on 2015 and ends on 2019. So uh, full data for the ad target media. The saturated media is actually built on the rolling window subset again. And this is the, again, the value of the media after saturation uh, function has been applied. Then going below, we can ignore this one as we, we won't need this in this video. Uh, you will see the decomp media, which is basically day by day on the rolling window subset, the exact data that we have in the Pareto decomposition matrix as well. So you will see uh, how much our media variables, oh, sorry, wrong, uh, wrong sheet, uh, how much each media variable, um, how much of the revenue is attributed to each media variable. One thing that we can do with this data, for instance, in order to, to add some more plots to it, is actually uh, seeing how our media spend is distributed over time on our paid media channels. And to do this, we are going to take a little subset of the data that we see here. And specifically, we are going to take all the raw spend data. So this is from here to the end of this block. I've already done that and I copied it on this sheet. It's exactly the same data that we saw on the other sheet, but uh, only for the raw spend and this uh, specific one model. Let me zoom out again a little bit. And let's go with insert chart and let's stick with the stacked area chart. So uh, the, date, the data range here is actually A1 to F because the newsletter column is empty. F209. So all this big matrix of data basically okay so let's go back here on setup we have this right and now we want to 
uh, on the x-axis, take this one, which is uh, date, basically, there is no title on the column, and then add the TV spent, out of home spent, print, Facebook, and search spent. Okay. Now, let's move over here. Uh, maybe we can enlarge this a little bit to make it easier to, to see. And as you can see here by the, the colors, you can see that our biggest spend, our biggest media spend is invested on TV because basically the, the blue area is the bigger one on this chart. While the, the second most spending channel is clearly the search clicks as it's the, the red area. And there are specific time of the years from the 2016 to the 2018 in which we decided to spend quite a bit more on Facebook. And we can see it's about on the, the start of 2016 and between the end of, and the start of 2017. So maybe um, near Christmas, Christmas, for instance, we are spending more on Facebook to, to bring more sales. And then the, the Facebook spend actually goes a lot lower and starts to come back up only in the, the beginning of 2018. And then it's, it kind of stays um, a lot more, uh, sorry, I'm missing the word. It's, it's basically more f the same over time. So it's not changing that much anymore. And again, this is a ki the kind of plot that can give us a lot more information, visual information that we can share easily with, uh, with our teammates on where we are spending our money more. And if we pair this with maybe our revenue taking the data from another file, we can see that where, uh, whenever we are spending more, we are generating more sales, for instance. If we are spending more on search clicks and we see a peak on our revenue, that means that basically the, the search clicks is driving a lot of sales. And we can do this real quick in the decomp matrix, I think. If, let's say, over here, we want to add our, uh, let's take seasonality, holiday, competitor sales, TV spend, OO spend, and then we add Facebook and search clicks. And then we basically add the dependent variable. Here it's going to look a little bit different because the revenue is a lot higher in general. Uh, but this gives you kind of an idea of how the revenue is attributed to each variable over time. So what we may want to see is uh, in this time of the year where there is this peak on 2016, December 2016, there is this peak of revenue attributed to search clicks, basically. Let's go back here and see if 2016 there is a peak on the actual... Uh, Oh, sorry, I think this is, yeah, the end of 2016. So uh, let's go pretty much over here. And we see by the end of 2016, the start of 2017, we have a huge peak on um, media spend on search clicks. So uh, we see there is a correlation between spending more on search clicks and having more revenue, basically generating more revenue. And this is only... Um, an introduction to additional analysis that you can do using this data. If you're curious to, to learn more and to see uh, other kind of things that you can build outside Robin to help you explain what Robin learned and discovered about your business, just let us know down in the comments below and we will be really, really happy to, to create new content about this topic. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, hope you find it useful and have a nice day. Bye.